Hey guys, it's Carl. Crazy to think it's already September. We're already heading back to school. So if you're a student, no matter what grade or university or I guess any sort of school you're going back to, these are some of the best tech items to bring. And as always, I try to hook you guys up with some sort of giveaway. So we've got a sponsor of today's episode. So big shout outs to LG. They'll be providing uh, one of the giveaway items. So just be sure to sub to the channel. I think a lot of you are already. And if you already haven't, just hit that little uh, red button, notification bell. Follow me over on social, mainly Instagram, because there's so much YouTube spam, it's hard for me to sort out who actually wins. So I'll DM you, we'll swap info over there for your address. And let's get to our first item, which has to be the tech pack. And through these items, I'm gonna kind of give my budget option and the one that is slightly more expensive, the ones that I like, I get for students. You try to keep things on budget as Link's tail is in the video. Do you wanna say hi, buddy? If Link was going back to school, what would be your favorite piece of tech, Link? Woof. <laughs> okay, shall we get your ball? Ready? Go get it. Okay, Link made a good cameo there. So backpack number one, it's no specific brand in general. These are just the cheaper backpacks, for example, ones from Herschel. I actually got this from the Miami Club when I was at the Miami Grand Prix, but it's essentially just a cheap little bag. All of these cost 20 to $30. Most of them just have the one little zipper at the top to fit your books, to fit your laptop, and maybe some little pouch in the front to fit accessories. So these obviously aren't as good as tech packs or really student backpacks, but these just kind of help fit the budget. And of course, some of them do look pretty dope like this one. So as an example, if I had a book, which I'll pull off to the side, I could slide that in. Of course, a laptop will fit up top and say another little notebook you might have. The shitty thing about these backpacks is everything kind of floats around in the main compartment and it's hard to organize, but I guess that's the trade-off for only spending 20 to 30 bucks and for a backpack that you don't really have to worry about. So that's backpack choice number one. The second backpack is one that I honestly recommend and it's one that I've sworn by since, I think I've started this YouTube channel over a decade ago. These are the Air SF packs. These guys make the best packs in my opinion. They're unbranded, they're made of ballistic nylon. This one I've had for I think five to six years and I still bring it to my studio every single day. What makes these more expensive, obviously the material and they have all these different compartments to of course hold all of your tech and all of your stuff. So you can see different slots for say your notebooks, different slots for your laptops and of course still a lot of room for those expensive textbooks that I hope they still uh, don't charge for, but I'm sure being school, I know that textbooks are expensive. And in the front, they have different compartments. This one's got that front loading zipper. You can actually see I've just got some cables floating around in them. So just to show you guys that I actually use them. And my favorite thing at the bottom, it's actually this really handy shoe compartment because a lot of people go to the gym, they work out while they're in school. Just keep your stinky stuff in a separate compartment. And obviously you can kind of tell my main color on the channel, it's orange. Maybe I'm slightly biased why I love this one, but this one is around 120, $150. So a bit pricier, but if you invest into one in your first year, this will last you until your fourth, until you take your master's, probably even sometime after that. Like I said, I've had this one for five years. It's been dope. On to our earbuds choice. And I would say other than your smartphone, students use earbuds the most out of their pieces of tech, just because you use them all the time to study, to listen to music, to drown out what's going on around you. I know the most popular ones on the market, but it's kind of my job to find some other choices. These are the two that I've really been liking lately. These are the LG Tone Freeze. So we have the T90s and the TF8s, which are a bit more suited for workouts. So we'll get to the T90s first. These earbuds are actually the world's first with Dolby Atmos head tracking. And what that essentially means, when you move around your head in space, it can detect where the center stage would be. So right now, if I'm listening to music, I can hear that stronger coming out of the left ear and shifting on over to the right. Obviously something really hard to portray over video, but it gives you that extra bit of immersion and almost 3D awareness when you're moving your head around. So a really cool feature. 
They've also got a UV cleaning mode, which cleans out 99.9% .9 of the bacteria found on the ear gels. They've got nine hours of battery life. They have active noise canceling. They also have really good quality mics because a lot of people will still take Zoom calls, still do team meetings, still kind of work off earbuds. I think they're a really good combo. And if you are someone that loves to work out and wants a bit more robustness, check out the TF8s. These have an IPX7 rating. So if you are someone that loves to sweat or say run outside in the rain, these will be able to handle that. They also have these really great little fins on them to keep your earbuds in place. I know that when you're doing extreme workouts, moving your head around, the worst thing to have is to have your earbuds fall out of your ears. So these are just a bit more secure. Very similar other features. They've got the UV nano charging case. They of course have active noise canceling. So it really depends which set of earbuds you kind of prefer, which fits into your lifestyle. And like I said, I would honestly recommend both. You just gotta pick which one uh, fits for you. Moving on to laptops, and I was gonna include a couple in this list, but just because I've used the new MacBook Air with the new M2 chip, I've just realized how good this laptop is. And I would 100% recommend this to 100% of students, 98% of the other people out there, unless you're a true pro, true professional, really need the MacBook Pro, just stick with the MacBook Air. The performance is on point. There are a couple little niggles that I don't like. Of course, no SD card slot. Do students technically need that? Probably not. The performance on this, whatever you are handling at school, whether that's programming, whether that's architecture, whether that's word processing, banging out essays, watching a ton of Netflix, to be honest. I remember I did that uh, a lot of the time when I was in school. This thing will be your go-to device. The thinness, the portability, the form factor, the battery life. I'm consistently getting around 15-ish hours per charge. And my recommended spec for this is still the baseline with just the upgraded 16 gigs as an option. I know that only gives you 256 gigs of storage, but that brings me into my accessories for this. The first one just being an external hard drive. So I know that it's tempting to pay for the extra storage on your Mac. So if you have the money, do it. If you wanna save some money, you can grab an extra terabyte for a fraction of the cost. And you can of course swap these out as your hard drive gets a bit more full. So this one's simply just from SanDisk. It's a rugged one. It's kind of wrapped in rubber. So in case you drop it, it should still be able to work. The second accessory that you'll need is definitely a dongle because this laptop only has the two USB-C ports. Just get something with a few more ports. If you wanna dock this computer, say at your desk, say at home or at your dorm room, you'll wanna have something with an HDMI port. If you are still using some legacy ports like good old USB-A, SD card, or just an extra USB-C slot, just grab a dongle. These two accessories plus this laptop are the ultimate combo. And that's actually a great segue into the next piece, which is a tablet. So many students ask, can you get by rocking a tablet alone? I still think that's really tough. And I do have the iPad Air here. I know that um, I guess the Airs are the perfect student choice. I think this is a great tablet, probably the best one to get. But if you were only to choose one device, I would still lean over to the laptop itself just because there's programs that work specifically on dedicated OSs, Mac OS or even Windows OS, if you get a piece of stats software. I know that there's specific programs on school that still don't work on an iPad. Just for that reason alone, I would stick towards a true laptop. I know that iPads are pretty simple. If you are someone that just needs to jot down notes, to browse the net, to do very simple things. You can definitely get by on an iPad. You still need some extra accessories, like of course the Apple Pencil. Since this is the iPad Air, you need the Apple Pencil too. That's an extra, I think 150 bucks. If you are dead set on using your iPad as an only or sole device, you gotta grok a keyboard case combo with it. It just makes it so much easier to type. You'll be way quicker in typing out your emails, your Word documents, just anything in general, having a little dedicated mouse. I think this combo you can get by, but when you kind of check out the price of this entire package, you'll start to see why the MacBook Air makes a lot more sense. But um, I guess only you can decide what fits into your workflow and if this iPad combo will work for you as a student.
Quickly before we switch on over, you can see that I included a mouse. I almost forget about these every single time, but I think that they're so vital. I know that you can live the keyboard combo slash trackpad life, but when you get back to your dorm room, when you get back home, just have a mouse sitting on the desk. Your wrist will thank you, your carpal tunnel will thank you. I actually, um, little side note, got carpal tunnel when I was in university. I played way too much World of Warcraft. I'm getting off tangent. Wish I used a mouse. So this is the Logitech MX Master 3. I know that this one is slightly expensive. It's around $100. If you can splurge for it, it is just the smoothest mouse to use. Obviously on Amazon, there's 20, $15 ones. It's a mouse, you'll get by. Um, this is just my baby and I love it. So that's that accessory. The next piece of tech, which I think is also overlooked a bit is a wearable or a smartwatch. Once again, just something that might be a little accessory to add. So I think we went through a ton, or I think we went through a ton of Apple stuff. We have the MacBook Air, the iPad. If you're in the Apple space, if you're looking for a smartwatch, the Apple Watch is honestly a no brainer. I know by the time that this video goes live, it will probably be before the Apple keynote. So we will technically have the series eight announced. So my opinion for everyone with new iPhones, with new Apple Watches coming out, just wait to see what the keynote says. I wish uh, Apple sent us that info early so I can't technically leak anything. But the worst case, if you buy a older gen, they'll always be a tad bit cheaper. And if you like the new features of say the Apple Watch Series 8 or the iPhone 14, which is coming out, you can make that choice. So just wait a couple weeks. I know that you wanna go back to school fresh, decked out in new gear, looking uh, all slick, but just wait the couple extra weeks to see what Apple has to offer. But the Apple Watch makes sense to save some money on the flip side the Apple Watch SE, their budget version. If you don't care about having an always on display, slightly smaller screen, save the extra 100, 150 bucks and just get the Apple Watch SE. They do pretty much the exact same thing. Like I said, moving on to smartphones. These are the most used pieces of tech uh, in any student's arsenal. When I was in school, it was still the laptop, but we are just transitioning all into mobile use. So I have to, once again, give Apple their due plug. This is just the standard iPhone 13. It's the one you should get. Do not switch over to the 13 Pro unless you really need the extra battery life, which is the main reason why it's my daily driver. Once again, save the extra money, stick with just the standard standard 13. I think 98% of you will agree to that. On the flip side, we just mentioned that the Apple Watch event or the iPhone event is coming in the next, I would say week, week and a half. Wait to see what the iPhone 14 is going to say. And just from the initial leaks and rumors, we're gonna have a brand new camera. I think the uh, little welcome note showed some astrophotography. I unfortunately won't be at the event because um, I'm actually attending a Porsche event instead. I picked my poison and uh, went with another one of my favorite brands. I've been super lucky to attend iPhone events in the past. So uh, I wanted to work with Porsche as a, I think you can tell I'm one of the biggest Porsche fans. So that is the iPhone choice. Over on the budget side, this is the TCL 35G. For a couple hundred bucks, two, 300 bucks, this is probably one of the best phones that you can get. Obviously it's 5G, you've got a 50 megapixel camera. You can see some of the specs it has on the front as I literally just got this out of the box. I just want to share something that has a ton of value. So I know that TCL phones, I've checked them out in the past. You cannot beat the bang for your buck. So that is your budget option. And I think that pretty much wraps up the budget tech episode, or I should say student tech episode. There's one thing I want to bring into the mix, just for all you diehard gamers out there. I, uh, my grades definitely suffered a lot uh, playing too much World of Warcraft. If I had a mobile device, if I could play on my Nintendo Switch, at least I could go to class and um, pretend to be paying attention. I'm not condoning not paying attention in school, but I do still play a lot over on my Switch. So if you are someone that loves to play games, whether you're commuting, whether you've got a bit of downtime between classes, just rocking some mobile games over on the Switch. I honestly still think you cannot beat this console for mobile gaming. That will wrap up my student tech list for the year. Curious to hear your guys' thoughts. If I missed anything, I tried to go on the budget slash premium option. So uh, let me know your favorite. Once again, big thanks to LG for sponsoring this episode. Headphones are up for a giveaway. Um, 
yeah, best of luck back in school. Hope you guys crush it. I've got uh, my Oxford uh, school shirt on just for this vid. So yeah, that's it. We'll catch the rest of you in one of my next ones. Peace.